Alright guys, welcome to my presentation. So, for my topic I decided to do a machine condition monitoring, um, a case study from a petrochemical plant. So this is from a plant in Bamble, Norway, um, which is a, the plant is called State Oil, which is a state-owned oil company and they produce polypropylene and uh, high and low density polyethylene at a rate of 300,000 tons per year. Um, so they wanted to employ vibrational analysis monitoring equipment because this was a brand new plant uh, being built. So they hired a consulting company called Brulin Care uh, this is 1980 this was done so quite a while ago and they wanted to install a constant monitoring system for their essential equipment and the savings from the program that they installed uh, actually paid for the system within 18 months so uh, pretty good cost return so the basic setup, uh, three sections total. So the vibration pickup, which was uh, accelerometers permanently mounted on machines in various places. So those signals were sent to a main control room and then uh, alarms were programmed in if they had um, certain maximums exceeded and then lastly uh, the data was stored at one minute and 24 hour intervals depending on what machine it was so here's a little uh, flow chart of the system so we have your vibration signals coming in to the monitor which sends them to the computer and then the computer can go through their different printers analyzers and then uh, save it off to hard disk so this was the setup they had uh, as far as analyzing so the first machine was the agitator and basically the agitator is a, a large mixer. So this is one of their most critical machines for production. So here's a little graphic of the agitator. Big tank, um, mixing blades, gearbox motor, and then each one of these little circles is one of the uh, accelerometers. So various places and then all sent back to the monitor. So, uh, the first thing they found with the agitator was if you look at this graph, this is uh, time versus hertz. So as you can see, there's a increasing trend here so at a, at a planned production stop, they replaced the bearing in the seal. Um, and when they inspected the bearing, they found that there was a spall in the outer race. Right here. Um, but this was a pretty minor. They figured they could have ran that bearing for um, quite a while. But still, a fault nonetheless. So, uh, a little while later after that, um, during a scheduled PM, they found that uh, there was a sudden increase in vibration. So if you look from here to here, you can see that there's a definite increase in these higher frequency uh, data ranges. 
Um, so they assume that this was due to poor lubrication in the bearing. So they pumped grease into the bearing and they found that the, these levels would drop back to normal for a while, but then raise again. So eventually they decided to uh, stop production and pull the bearing off and reinspect it. And they found that um, a bunch of the rollers were deformed. So you can see the, uh, there's these little flat spots all around them. And uh, in the end, it turns out that the bearing had been mounted in the first place uh, without any grease pumped into it. So pretty much self-destructed very quickly um, with zero lubrication. Uh, another one, this is from the gearbox. So you can see again here to here, uh, high frequency increases and they uh, assume that this was a, a bearing problem in the early stages. Um, but they kept monitoring it and found that these levels never really increased after this. So they decided to um, just keep doing regular lubrication and run the motor until the next scheduled shutdown. So at that shutdown, they um, took the bearings on the motor and found that there was pitting on one of the outer races. Uh, so that was what was causing this. So second machine is a screw compressor. Another uh, critical machine in their production layout. So here's a little graphic of how it works. So this is a um, positive displacement compressor where they're using it to compress uh, gas by with these two intertwining screws uh, where these lobes are coming together, kind of like a gear mesh scenario. And then here's a layout of the machine, so the motor gearbox compressor and then these accelerometers scattered around and then sent back to the main monitor. So over a period of time they found that one of these compressors showed an increase in vibration at the lobe frequency which is 398 Hertz. So if you could see uh, you know, here to here, very similar, except for this one spike here at the low frequency. So this indicates uh, wear or possibly minor damage to the compressor screws, which if left alone could lead to more serious damage. So again here, kind of an increase going on. Um, however, in the following weeks, they kept monitoring this and found that um, it basically leveled off. Um, they kept running it for approximately 10 more months um, until they had a planned uh, maintenance event. And then they examined the screw compressor and found that there was some wear on the screws. Last machine, um, extruder. So they had seven of these machines running at the plant, and each one is driven by an electric motor through a gearbox with five shafts. So these extruders aren't um, constantly being monitored, but they are on a periodic measurement basis. So the manufacturer of these extruders recommends that they be rebuilt after 250,000 running hours. Um, but since they introduced the 
vibration monitoring, they found that in some cases they this life has been extended almost by twice, so up to, to, up to 500,000 hours before a rebuild. Um, so it could cost savings. Uh, so one of the damages they found in these was uh, low frequency increases. So in this graph you can see the dark and then there's a second graph kind of laid over the top. So you can see um, pretty much increases along this whole band of frequency. Um, and this was from uh, small needle bearings that uh, carry shafts in the extruder itself. And then lastly, uh, this is a gear teeth plot. So your gear mesh frequency was at 700 hertz. And then at each of these spikes, the sideband spacing is from the shaft speed. So when they uh, stripped this gearbox, they found that there was a damage to one of the teeth on the gears, which was causing these spikes. So by using the uh, constant monitoring and the comparison, um, they found that they were able to save money. Um, you can see as the years went on, less and less faults detected. So kind of a bathtub curve effect. And they also found that the, the breakdown of just one of the agitators would pay for this complete vibration monitoring system. So uh, cost savings was achieved. Thanks.